Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today we're going to be catching some bass on a very old worm. Stick around. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my ray band. Welcome lights. to Retro Bassin. It seems like every time I go on the water, I've got in my mind to fish with a certain bait. Maybe it's a specific topwater from the 1970s, maybe it's a crankbait from the 1980s. Either way, I usually have a few of that bait tied on the line. That being said, without a doubt, if I had to pick one bait to fish with for the rest of my life, it would be the rubber worm. So welcome to our vintage worm journey. If this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish at old school, I'm talking about classic, vintage, and discontinued baits from the glory days of bass fishing and before. Consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so that you know when we post a new video. The book really that, that got my mind reeling about the possibilities of vintage worms was this. There He Is by Bill Dance. Talking to my buddy Pete McClure who has been Bill's videographer for many, many decades. There he is is actually a pretty iconic phrase when you're on the boat with Bill. I asked Pete, I said, how is it that you always have the camera rolling right before Bill sets the hook in a bass? And Pete said that when Bill first feels a fish, what he says is there he is. It details everything from Bill catching the first ever bass in a BASS tournament, which of course he caught on a plastic worm, a seven and a half inch blue flip tail to be exact. It also details everything about Bill's role with Cream Lure Company, the time he spent there working with Nick Cream, and really Bill's instrumental role in getting the world out on that brand new rig called the Texas Rig. But what I love most about this book is the idea, the imagery, the shapes, the size, the colors of baits that I have not seen, some for many years and some never. Check this thing out. There are shapes, there are sizes, colors, uh, things that uh, you just never ever see today. I swear these days, you go to Academy Sports, you look at the line of Guggen baits for example, they've got 28 colors, sure, but everyone is a variation of the same old green pumpkin. But back in the day, check these colors out. You had some solid colors, some yellows, translucents, just crazy, crazy stuff. So that got me thinking about what we do on the water every day. I've got boxes full of old school worms. And from now on, when I get on the water, I might be doing a show about, let's say, a Doug Hannon topwater frog, or maybe a RC3 pose crankbait. But without a doubt, I've always got at least one worm rod tied on. So now as part of our vintage worm journey, on Retro Bassin, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a special worm for each trip or couple trips, depending on how often I use it, and I'm gonna to try to catch fish on an old, most likely discontinued worm. So this week will be episode number one in the vintage worm journey. We hit the lakes for the first time since the quarantine lifted in Texas, and it was pretty cool to get on the water. I don't think those fish had heard the sound of an ad board for about 45 days, so I'm sure they were a little bit shocked. But we were able to go out there and catch a couple of fish on a bait that I just picked up on eBay. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> All right, buddy. Woo, he hit shallow. He hit shallow. Oh, come up here, bud. All right, here we go. Nice little springtime bass on a new bait. Take that back. On a very old bait that is new to me. I had seen this thing back from the 1978 Bass Pro Shops catalog, this sweet little worm called the action worm. Little curly tail worm that looked like kind of nothing I'd ever seen. 
happened to stumble across a 12 pack on eBay. And there we go. So there's a nice little springtime bass. Check this dude out. These guys are skinny. <laughs> uh, all right, let's let this dude go. Nice little fish, huh? So the other day I was perusing my 1978 Bass Pro Shops catalog and I came across a one page ad for worms that I'd never seen before. It was called an action worm and it was pretty reminiscent of the old school ring worm from Rebel, except this thing had some different curves to it, but the same deal, little six inch, four inch baits with that small, really subtle curly tail. It, but it has those ribs, which supposedly makes it catch air, hold scent, all that good stuff. I did, kinda didn't think much of it until I saw a listing randomly for a 12 pack on eBay. Uh, picked them up, they actually arrived this week. And that was the first worm that I tied on. It's been a hot minute since I've been on the lake. I'm not so sure what phase of life and dating the bass are in right now. My hunch is that the spawn is over. Most of these fish are post-spawn. So I'm fo focusing on some of the deeper weed edges here. But that fish I caught up shallow, so I don't know what's going on. There are a ton of boats today. Uh, today's Friday, Texas opened up its uh, public lakes on Wednesday. So needless to say, there was a little bit of a line when I got to the boat ramp this morning. Luckily, I was only number six. Oh, there's one. There he is. Whoa! Come on, buddy. That's a nicer fish. That's a nicer fish. That is a nicer fish. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, buddy. Ha-ha! <laughs> oh, come off. What? It's a little nicer fish. So he actually did hit on the deep edge. Let's see if I can get him in. There he is. Nice little spring fish, and you can see the 1978 action worm hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. I don't know why, but I just geek out on the thought that this lure has been sitting in a tackle box for uh, over 50 years at this point. Uh, we pull it out today, rig it up, and she catches. Boy, definitely fishing at old school. Awesome, awesome fish. <laughs> I've got this thing paired up with a little tungsten weight and just a 3 aught Gamagatsu hook. And there's our worm. Nice. <laughs> oh, there's one. Ah, that was a fish. Shoot. Dang, nabbit. That was definitely a fish. There he is. Ha <laughs> ha! There he is, son! Oh, so, son! <laughs> Alright, let's get him in. Come here, buddy. Alright, there he is. Another nice little fish on the old action worm. Man, I am actually so pumped to, to do this. I, I, I did a little bit of math that was wrong. I said about 50 years. So this thing, this worm, is 42 years old. I will say it is almost, almost as old as me. I won't say exactly how, uh, how much age I have on this thing. Um, but it is pretty cool. I, I envision this old bait sitting in the bottom of somebody's tackle box for the past 42 years just waiting to get out there. I love fishing with these old worms for, for a couple of different reasons. Number one is the colors. Check this thing out. This is like a light translucent green that quite frankly you never ever see, but you used to see a ton. Secondly, these things, while not every worm is the same, these things do have some subtle differences as far as the action and presentation. And one thing you can guarantee is that no fish on this lake has ever seen anything quite like the action worm. 
All right, so my buddy Bill is gonna give me heck if I don't talk about my tackle, especially today. So today's combo, I switched up midstream because uh, quite frankly, I just destroyed uh, one of my first reels with uh, the backlash of all backlashes. So I decided to switch it up and go to my cranking rod. But I have not talked about this uh, combo yet on Retro Bassin, and it's definitely one of my favorites. So first I have a Lou Childre, or better known as Lou's, BBLE Speed Spool. And check out those classic handles. I've got this reel paired up with a six foot Lou's laser stick, medium action bait casting rod, with of course, the classic Retro Bastin casting handle. This combo is great. I've been fishing this more for crankbaits, and I've got a little David Fritz special coming up, hopefully soon, where I'll be fishing exclusively with the Lou's rod and reel. All right, so that's our Lou's bait casting combo, just for you, Bill. I've been perusing one of my favorite vintage Bass Pro Shops catalog. That's the 1978 edition of the Master Catalog. In it, as I was leafing through, is a vintage worm that I had never heard about, but it immediately caught my eye with this two-page spread. It was called the Breathing Worm from Action Lures. Check this stuff out. You can get a pack of 25 six-inch worms for $2.29. It also came in these pretty sweet disco colors. Check this spread out. The concept of the breathing worm is interesting. It's got these little ridges on it, sort of like a rebel ringworm. The whole deal with this worm is that as it goes subsurface, it captures little bubbles of air, which over the course of the retrieve will release. So I found this worm in the 1978 Bass Pro Shops catalog that I'd never heard of. I started scouring the internet and I found a seller who had a couple for sale in some loose bags without the packaging. I bid, I won, and I, I picked up I probably about 50 of these breathing worms. I asked the seller if he knew anything about the history of this bait. Interestingly enough, he said he was a bass fishing guide in the 1970s and 80s, and the breathing worm was one of his favorite baits to fish with, especially in spring. These worms were so effective that he said he actually bought a large quantity of them as a dealer, and he quote unquote wagon jobbed them as long as he could until the packages just wouldn't hold up anymore. According to the seller, they originally had a faint cinnamon scent, but I can attest that 40 years later, there's really no scent left at all. So I'll go ahead and show you. I had to repackage the worms that I got in <laughs> this Bass Pro Shops thing because they did not have the packaging. And I saw that he had a couple different listings, all with no packaging, and I asked why. Well, it turns out, while this was a great fish catcher, one of the real challenges with the action lures was that the packaging was so substandard that it broke apart almost immediately, which ultimately led to the discontinuation of the bait, even though it was a great fish catcher. We'll check out the couple that I have. So here's a six inch model in what I would consider a chocolate color, a solid, pretty sweet looking brown that you just don't see anymore. Here's the bait that I fish with all day long. I don't know if you could call this the disco green, but it's an old school translucent green. And you can see the little breathing appendages on each lateral aspect going down to a nice, really subtle curly tail. This bait fished really well today. It was, I think we were post spawn for the most part, um, but I was fishing, I was targeting the uh, deep edge of a grass flat I threw this thing out on, it's probably like a 1 16th ounce tungsten weight, Texas rigged, and I would just slowly crawl this thing through the weeds. The worm performed great, and the fish that hit it, hit it hard. Now I did add some scent to this, which might have helped uh, the retention factor just a little bit, but you could definitely see that the ridges helped that. So check out these little loops in the breathing worm. You can totally see how air would get in there upon a cast and slowly come out over the retrieve. Really liked this head design. It worked well to hold the eye of the hook. And this little curly tail 
really nice, subtle, almost a twiddle tail action. In the comment section down below, if you've got a favorite soft plastic bait that you would like to see featured on Retro Bassin, hit me up and I'll see if I can get my hands on a few. So until next time, keep the grass off your worms and definitely fish it old school. This old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.